So uh, I saw in the, the news media that the first uh, uh, Oculus Rifts are mm -hmm. getting shipped out soon. Yeah, yeah, they've been saying that for the last six months. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually going to happen this time. Uh, maybe. Uh, I, I think I did not get on that list. I don't know. Um, when I bought one, it said May. But then, on the other hand, I am a Kickstarter contributor, so I'm one of the people who's getting a free one, and I'm hoping that they're going to serve us first. Mm, so so. The, time, the clock is ticking now to finish building our ultimate virtual reality gaming machine. This is designed not merely to meet the specs that Oculus Rift posted, but to exceed them in every respect, I was as you say, can you're see. You're blasting right past them with this. This is, <laughs> this is awesome. Superb stuff. Awesome, and and we've been using the folks at PC Perspective to uh, help us build this. Uh, we're getting close. I put the. In fact, we have a video of me uh, assembling the case because we got enough stuff. The the motherboard. There's the power supply going in, and uh, we had enough enough stuff to start doing the assembly. Now, this sped up video doesn't tell the whole story. <laughs> It doesn't have a soundtrack. I should imagine there's yeah, a certain amount of cursing no going on in this. swearing, but see that little piece, that little uh, uh, I.O. board in there? I assembled the whole thing, and I forgot to put that in. And then you know how you get to the, you open the oh, box, you go, no. what's this piece? What is it? Where does this go? Oh, if I had read the manual, I would have known. So eh, 20 screws later, I'd removed everything, <laughs> put that little piece back in it. Now we've got it. It's nice and solid. You know, it's really kind of challenging because... Uh, we're going to start this up on the air, right? I mean, we're not going to start it the day before off the air in secret and private. We're going to actually press the on button uh, in public. So this could be very either humiliating. I was going to say, it's, it's, it's either one or the other. It's either fantastic or <laughs> utter humiliation. A cause for joy. Well, one thing you've got to have, of course, for all those games, uh, and this machine's got plenty of space for it, is a hard drive. And we thought we would ask Alan Malventano back from PC Perspective to tell us what to put in. Hello, Alan. How's it going? Now, I, great, welcome back. I uh, noticed on your hardware leaderboard, and by the way, this is where the inspiration comes, they have a, uh, a hardware leaderboard they keep up to date with four different machines from basic to out of this world expensive, that you kind of waffled a little bit on solid state storage. What are the, what are the two choices? For solid state, it's basically just a serial ATA or M.2 which is using a, which actually communicates over PCI Express. Are, they, are those a lot more expensive? Uh, they tend to be about twice as much for <clears throat> the same capacity. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you have to realize the drive tends to perform, like in sequential transfers, uh, one of those drives that you're holding in your hand right there is about like between three and five times the speed oh. of... Wow. a single serial ATA drive that was half the cost. So and, you're getting much more performance. And these are the, this is, for instance, what Apple did uh, last year to speed up <clears throat> their uh, solid-state drives in their laptops. They started using PCIe as the bus, right? Uh, yeah, they, they shifted to... Uh, last year, Apple shifted to NVMe, oh. which is the pro a different protocol over okay. PCI Express. Uh, but like even in years prior, they had been doing... Uh, PCI-based SSDs to speed things up, like in I think it was the like early MacBook Airs. I think right. even used them. Right. Um, but the newer ones are using NVMe, and NVMe is. Uh, are we using NVMe? You are. Of oh, course. thank God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the the idea behind NVMe is that the old way of communicating to a storage thing. Yeah. Um, in in a computer. Uh, was at first it was like IDE, and then it was using serial ATA, and right. then they were using, um, a, that's the physical changes, but then there were uh, protocol changes. Uh, the older one is called AHCI, which was designed really for hard disks. Right. And AHCI has been used for a solid state, even PCI solid state, for a while, and eventually something had to give, right? Because the SSDs were getting too fast for the protocol. The protocol has too much overhead in the system, so the CPU has to think too much every time it wants to ask ah, the SSD for some info. Of course. Right? So NVMe is a much lower level, like thinner interface. It, there's less stuff to get in the way. Uh, the operating system can talk more directly straight to the controller on the SSD with less, you know, less uh, extra steps for the kernel to take. So this is an NVM Express or NVMe 
We got yep. you recommended, and you know I've been hearing this from you for some time that the Samsung uh, EVO drives are really good. This is the 950 Pro. This is the latest one, right? That is the latest one. Yes. What's the firmware in this? Is it? Uh, it used what do you to mean? be. Used to be that was you would you. Is it sand fine or whatever or what? So does that matter anymore? The, for the firmware, I think you're mixing the firmwares with controllers. Sandforce used to make Sandforce uh, serial controllers. controller, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So all of the parts on that, Samsung does all of their stuff in-house. They in do house. it all. They, okay. they make their controller. They make their flash. They make their RAM. Okay. So it, it's all, that is all like 100% Samsung components. We don't have to worry thing. about that stuff anymore. This is... Uh, Not this, really. Yeah. And, and this is 512 gigs. How much is this setting us back? Uh, that drive, it comes in at 62 cents a gig. I think it's uh, 320 bucks right now. Uh, yeah, you know what? They've really come down a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, really, it's really not bad. I mean, you used to pay this. Not too long ago, you would pay this much for, like, a pro, you know, prosumer uh, serial ATA drive. Right. So, yeah, right. it's really not that expensive. Uh, where does this go on the motherboard? Where do I want to get? It's it's so amazing that this is the this is going to be the boot drive. It's just thick. That that's it's half so a little for terabyte. Yeah. So that's a good question on that board because I'm not sure if it lays flat and if it does, it might lay flat underneath one of your PCI uh -oh. cards. Uh I might have to take something out here, huh? All right. Uh, well, I I've done it before. I can do it again. It should be towards the bottom, towards you. Yeah. And it now it, if it's not a lay flat kind of a slot. It might actually be vertical, and there might have been a bracket included with that motherboard uh, to help support it. So, uh, I think oh, I, I see, it right see there. I see it right here. Is this it right here? Yep. You just pointed to it. Is that a vertical or a horizontal slot? It looks like it. Uh, I don't know. Let me just jam it in here and see what happens. <laughs> oh dear. Oh uh, well, what could go? What could possibly go wrong? It looks like so, it's going to be a, a horizontal slot. Okay. Um, so you're going to want to. You're going to want to have to remove the sound card first. And uh, put yeah. it in there, but that's but that's roughly where it's going to go. Yep. So the safer way to insert those, just so you're curious, in case you're curious, is yeah. you want to come in at a slight angle. You don't need to be completely flat. And then snap it down. Uh, it's not even a snap. You basically, if you have the angle right, it yeah. will basically just it will basically just fall right into the slot. Well, give oh, okay. me a screwdriver. You guys, let's see. Uh, maybe I can. No, I need a screwdriver. A Phillips screwdriver. I can remove this. But by the way, this I feel like five twelve gigabytes. It's it's amazing. So scanty. Shouldn't we have more storage? <laughs> I mean, you could. Uh, Samsung is going to release a not? one terabyte. Samsung is going to release a one terabyte model of actually that drive soon. Ah. Uh, well, so, we can't wait yeah. that long. So we bought I know. not one but two, three terabyte Western Digital Red drives. Okay, so that's for your mass storage. This is for mm. our, this is for the games that where we need a lot of data, and I think six terabytes. Should be enough. <laughs> yeah. Should be enough well, for anybody. But there's room so, in here. Why not, right? The way that you should configure that system, if you were trying to just be your typical gamer, you're putting everything in one system, and even assuming you don't have a NAS or something in your house, like yeah. just, this is, this is going to be it, like all your stuff, right? right. Um, you should probably run those reds in a RAID 1. Ah. Which is a mirror. Okay. Right. Okay. That way, I uh, only have three terabyte storage, but it's duplicated. It's mirrored. Yeah, everything's everything's duplicated. Yeah. And not only that, but with the way the Intel controller handles RAID one, when you read from a RAID one, it acts like a RAID zero. When you In other read words, from a RAID one, a striped, I mean a, a mirrored array, it acts like a striped array. Correct. The the Intel controller is optimized enough to where. It, it, the data is in two places, so it just stripes it as if it was a RAID 0. Interesting. Um, All right. and, you, and it ends up getting, you know, two times the drive performance when, when you're reading. That's, and that's kind of where it's more that's important. That's what you want, right? though, right? Yeah. I don't mind slow yeah. writes if I get fast reads, especially yeah, for because gaming. Your, your writes, chances are, it's a game install Small from amount Steam. of data. Right, right. It, it, well, not just a small amount of data, but the, the rate that it's coming into your system is limited by, right. you know, your internet. Right. And right? I only do that once. I'm thinking of saved game saving, and that's a small packet of data. The biggest thing is the read, where you're reading massive textures in. You want that to be as fast as possible. So that's what we'll do. We'll yep. set this, and and the motherboard. This is motherboard RAID. Furthermore, we always, you know, I mean, I, I always was nervous about RAIDs from BIOS, but it's gotten pretty good now. It's pretty reliable. Or should it's I get been, a Promise RAID card? 
No, no, it's been uh, it, for just two hard drives. Uh, Intel rate is more than sufficient. All right. So I took the uh, sound card out, and I think I now have access to this slot. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna. Now, by you, the way, uh, this thing is so small. We lost it for a minute there. I don't know if you, <laughs> while you were talking, there was panic as I was going. Where did I put that? What did I do with it? But okay, it was, now there's something else you're gonna want to uh -oh. look at before oh. you put that in. Yeah. <clears throat> Should so I there, look for uh, the uh, the bracket in the motherboard box? Will there be a no, bracket? There, there is not a bracket for that one because okay. it's horizontal. Okay. Uh, there will be a standoff screwed into the motherboard in one of those four locations. Oh. You see those four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, so I need a standoff? Be, well, is there a standoff in any of those four? I can't tell from the video. Uh, it's not very tall if it is a standoff. It's kind of a, it's kind of, it's slightly raised. Yeah, there might be a standoff included in the box. That will hold this end. Oh, I see, because it has a little notch there for, for a yeah, screw. Yeah, so you don't want to... Should correct. I put this in first and then uh, and then attach the standoff? Yeah, it seems like that's where it's going to come down, right there. The standoff is going to screw in underneath the end of it. I need it underneath. So we need the motherboard box because we, we put everything in the motherboard box. But, it, but for the meantime, I'm going to just try angling this. Yeah, in you could just, just lay it in there. And but then, just, just for those watching the video, they should just be aware that, you know, there, gonna there usually the is a standoff. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it comes already installed in one of those places on the board. And I can see why, because this it, it goes in very easy. It's not really, you need yeah. something to hold it in. Yeah, at an angle, it go, It just basically falls in because right. that's how it's meant to be inserted. And then, and then I just, will screw it down in the standoff here. Yep. Is that what you're saying? Okay, good. I know you yep, can yep. hardly see in there, but all right, excellent. No, I got it. Yeah, and then uh, I'm sure also as long as we're getting the motherboard uh, box, there's going to be brackets for these uh, spinning drives as well. These now we chose red. Why red? What are, you know? I always get confused. There's green, black, red. These are the Western Digital drives. What's red? They, they've actually uh, recently phased out green. It kind of changed into what's called blue, which is just like their consumer generic consumer drive. Okay. Um, reds are optimized more for being in a raid. Ah, so that's why we got them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. So these are designed for NASes or some sort of raid environment. In this case, we're going to take these two, so three like terabyte drives, and we're going to put them in in raid mirrored raid raid one, so that we have some data redundancy on here. Yep, and as you were talking about earlier, it's also a very good idea to have your SSD occasionally backing up to those mirrored Ah, rooms. good thinking. Yep. All right, we believe that we have found the standoffs. Uh, it sure looks like there's these are two little screws. Should they be metal? It should just be like a simple standoff and a screw. Yeah, that's what it is. Simple standoff yep. and a screw, all right. So I'm gonna do this later because that uh, that's definitely gonna get lost. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, I don't wanna have to find it on camera. But there you go. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll, so the, that's the, actually a good tip, though. So that you find the standoff, put the standoff in before you put in the SSD. Put lay in the SSD. It goes in very easily. Then flatten it and screw it in in place. Yep. Right. So that way it's not going to rattle around. Yep. Alan, it's so I'm I feel fortunate that we had you here. Otherwise, it could have been a re <laughs> repeat of when I assembled this case last time. You know, there'd be some random screw you just kind of put I in. I don't know what this extra just, extra screw here is uh, for. I'll just screw that down there. Duck, you, know you, duck tape. you know you're really in trouble when you put the case back on and you lift it up. And it and, rattles. And it rattles <laughs> something in there. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> Nothing's going to rattle on this one. I'm being very, uh, very cautious. So I'm going to put the standoff in before I put the memory back in, right? And that just screws so there's, up very easily. There, there's one simple note for when you're finally doing your operating system install on this. Yes. Uh, since that is a NVMe drive, yes, you are going to want your Windows installer to be a UEFI type installer. Because it's an NVMe drive, I need a UEFI installer. Yes. Okay. So if you if you have got like a retail Windows 10 USB installer, you'll be good because that's how they come. But if I'm making an ISO, I have to use a special UEFI boot drive maker to make it work. You would want to use, you know that tool named Rufus? Yeah. Just a very simple... Rufus uh, will do that? You want to use Rufus, but you can't go with the default. You have to choose a couple of options down, which is specifically uh, UEFI, and it forces it to be UEFI. Right. You don't want the CSM, which is called the Compatibility Support Module. Right. Um, CSM is for the older stuff. You have the brand new stuff. Yep.
then that yeah. means, of course, that I can never put Linux on this again, right? No, uh, I'm no just you're joking. Can. I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> well, UEFI had a bad reputation for a while as being uh, making it very hard to put anything but Windows on a machine. That was that was the secure boot secure stuff, boot, which was yeah, just that was yeah. something that was tossed in there, but right. not not UEFI's fault specifically. Right. Actually, that's right. Okay. So Microsoft's fault. We're going to use wow, Rufus. You're, oh, you're, you're putting this. You're putting this in. Hey, you know what? This is what this show's all about: making the mistakes <laughs> so you don't have to. I wish I had a. This is one where I wish I had a magnetic uh, screwdriver. Uh, those are okay to use, right? Uh, uh, yeah, but I'm not sure if that screw is... It may, it may be aluminum. All right, yep. now I think I'm ready. There we go. All there right. it goes. This is like brain surgery. I'm waiting for the... Uh, I'm waiting for the operation uh, buzzer <laughs> to go off. <laughs> nope, it's in there. It's solid. I don't think that's going anywhere. Yay. Look at that. That's hard to believe that that's, that's the boot drive. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. just insane. We'll leave that's uh, really bonkers. we'll leave these uh, these uh, Western uh, digital reds for uh, later. We'll put those in later. But uh, that okay. So we're going to use Rufus to install Windows on this. This will be our boot drive, and I presume applications as well on the SSD. And then we'll use the RAID one dual three terabyte drives for data drives, and uh, that way we'll have the speed, yep. but also some redundancy. Yep, Excellent. you put your bulk data on there. But I would recommend. Uh, if you have a full half a terabyte there, um, you can get away with the majority of your games also installed to that. Yeah, I'll put the games um, on there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what what I would recommend as for uh, your kind of typical gamer that's going to have you know a round of games that they're going to want to play, chances are half a terabyte will be able to hold the ones that they're playing right now. Um, and then if you need to clear the space off later, you can just use Steam's export feature and just ah. ex like wrap up the game so you don't have to re-download it. Yeah. But when you but export it over to the three terabyte drives. Right, locally. And right? then I will and also yeah. keep an image of our boot drive up to date on the uh, on the uh, extra spinning drives so we can always restore that 512. Yep. Man. Alan, <laughs> what a f I, it's great to see you again. Thank you so yeah. much for being here. It's been an education. Isn't Mike. he great? Yeah. Alan Malventano. And of course, if you if you read PC Perspective, you know Alan and his great work, PCPER.com. Uh, I'll be calling you uh, when I when it's Rufus time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Thanks. This is fun. We're getting there. Yep. We're very close. I and I and I was just informed that uh, that according to Oculus, they are shipping the Kickstarter editions next week. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So we better hurry. <laughs> we better hurry. Has anybody bought Windows 10 for this thing? Oh, it's free. That's right. We don't have to worry. <laughs> I'm going to have to go out and buy a, something I haven't done in a long time, a boxed copy of Windows 10. Oh, bless. To, to put on this buy thing. them boxed? Yeah. Good for this exact uh, occurrence, right? And uh, Rufus. We're going to put it on Rufus. Or we'll buy it. You know, it'll buy it. It'll be UEF to, UEFI uh, uh, in the box. Is that how they sell it now? Do they sell? When you get Windows in a box, it comes with a USB key. That's awesome. That's your boot disk. Nice. And that will be, of course, UEFI. Well, it beats a stack of floppy disks. I mean, that was just... <laughs> <laughs> I've installed Windows that way. I have indeed.